Hi everybody, what's up? My name is Sabine, I'm the Left-Handed Alchemist and welcome to my channel. Welcome, here we are today. I'm just gonna talk about a little bit more about spirituality, honestly. I've been feeling a little bit more and more courageous to talk about my beliefs. I know, I know. You don't have to stay around if you don't care. I'm not here to evangelize. It is never, ever, ever my intention to try and make you believe what I believe. Because I feel like evangelism is like morally like very not okay. I don't feel like it's okay to tell other people that they're wrong and that you know the answer because there's only one truth. Like I just want to lay that foundation right now. So if you're that kind of person, find another video. If you're not that kind of person, stick around. Maybe, maybe you'll resonate with something that I say. That's really all it's about is like resonance here. I'm trying to connect to like-minded people help you feel a little less alone. Okay, let's get into it. I grew up kind of Christian adjacent. Episcopalian mother, Catholic father, not religious at all. I know Catholics can be kind of intense, did not experience any of that. We just like went to church and it was never really a big thing. The Episcopalians are really chill. Like I have to be honest, that that group of Christianity, real, real chill, real low key. They're not cramming anything down your throat. I love that. I can respect that. We moved to Lynchburg, Virginia by the time I'm in like middle school, which if you don't know anything about Lynchburg, Virginia, it is the home of Jerry Falwell and Liberty University. Jerry Falwell is the guy who's basically responsible for making God a Republican. He was pissed off that he had to integrate his private school. So he started the Moral Majority, which was basically like a lobbying group where they started to put those like really violent, um, like anti-abortion billboards up around the country and essentially like really push that evangelical vote. Like it was just because he was pissed off that he had to integrate his school. It actually had nothing to do with God, but he used God as a tool to manipulate people and like, you know, create a very emotional appeal by seeing aborted fetuses on billboards to manipulate people into voting Republican because God is a Republican now. So that kind of mentality was like very prevalent in where I was growing up in like middle school and high school, which in my opinion is kind of toxic. You know, you don't really get to be who you truly are. It's all under this idea of like one truth. We're going to interpret the Bible very literally. If you don't believe what I believe, you're going to hell, which for me as somebody who's like very individual, who you know, just doesn't really believe in this stuff, never really resonated with the story. I got a lot of resistance from my community because I was a non-believer. So I basically left that community once I could. And I moved to Arizona where I was essentially an atheist for a few years until I started to feel that spiritualness within me and explore like life beyond what Christianity has to offer. I will say this, I don't think Christianity is inherently bad. I don't think that any one like way to see God is inherently bad. I don't believe in one truth. I believe that God wears many faces. The thing about humans is we are very influenced by story and by myth. I think that like culturally, every culture around the entire world has stories and myths that they use to basically explain the world around them and try and understand life. And Christianity is no different than that. It's a book of stories that people have found that's filled with wisdom and filled with like practical advice for how to live your life in like a very peaceful and grounded way. And when looked at with the eye of like, I want to manipulate a bunch of people to believe the same thing that I believe can be used as a tool for bad. But if you're looking at it from a perspective of like, I wanna connect with the people around me. I want to love the people around me and love myself and love the world around me and see this like inherent God and all. Then you can also look at the Bible and see that as well. It really depends on what perspective you are looking at. And that goes with any world religion. The God of the Bible is also in Hinduism and Buddhism and the bajillion other different forms of deity worship and witchcraft and religion that the human experience has to offer. I think that because we are all so diverse as people, story is the thing that kind of connects us all. And we all have different stories that we resonate with. So for me, the stories of the Bible, don't, I don't get it. It doesn't quite click with me. It doesn't fill me with that like, aha, peace, whatever, I can surrender my life to this. It just doesn't for me. But if it does for you, that is valid. Like, I'm not trying to take that away from you. I'm just trying to offer you like the perspective of maybe 
broadening your mind, allowing yourself to see that you are allowed to believe what you would like to believe. I am allowed to believe what I would like to be. And this like Christ consciousness of it all, this connected understanding of everything knows that like me believing something different than you does not take anything away from you. It doesn't make you less of a person at all. When I went to college, I really started my deconstruction process. I had grown up with these like a lot, like this idea of like, it was either Christianity or nothing. And so when I chose nothing, it was kind of like, okay, well now what? And I go through the first couple of years of college, I'm miserable. I didn't realize that I had grown up in an abusive situation until I got out of it and my body started to relax and feel its feelings. And you know, a lot of the trauma started to come up. And those first couple of years of college were pretty dark for me. I'm not gonna lie. I would go to frat parties all the time. I would drink alcohol for free. I would throw my body to the wind. Whoever wanted it could have it. And it just didn't feel very empowering, didn't feel very uplifting. I was pretty depressed, pretty miserable, had a hard time making friends. And I just didn't like myself very much. And then I realized like, okay, I came from an abusive situation. My like upbringing kind of helped to shape my internal monologue of just like generally not being good enough and not liking myself. So cool, how do we fix that? Starts to go to therapy, starts to feel my feelings, starts to realize how cyclical this is. I start to learn a lot about narcissism and codependency and I start to understand, oh, this is something that my ancestors have been dealing with. And so in that moment, I make this vow with the universe that I'm not gonna do that to my kids. And that's when my spiritual awakening really started. I would say 2016 is when it like really just took off, really started because I kind of made like a deal with the ancestors. And the ancestors are a spiritual force in your life that is tied to those who come before you. It's blood family, like the, like literally your ancestors of your DNA, it can be people who adopted you. Like if you're adopted, you still have ancestors with the family that adopted you. It can be people who participated in the same kind of hobbies and crafts that you do, same kind of skills and like labor that you do. It's just connecting with the people who came before you in the skill, the trade, the family, like the bloodline, whatever it is. And they offer wisdom to you through like mediumship kind of. And it sounds kind of scary and woo woo. And I have to be honest, at the time when I was making these vows, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't really know like what this was going to become, but it just started out for me that it was like synchronicities everywhere. So synchronicities being these like little signs and symbols that like are just around you that you end up having this like feeling of like, oh, this is more than just a hawk flying overhead. This is more than just a few letters here and there kind of like putting pieces together. It's like this like, I think soul to soul connection where you're finding these little keys to yourself out and about in the world that help awaken something within you. And honestly, a lot of the times it's really just to like point you in the right direction to show you, you are on the right track. Here you are, here's the sign that things are on the right track. And I started to have this conversation with this non-physical space around me that was really interesting to me. I learned a lot about the law of attraction and how your mindset really creates your reality. And I was really jumping off the edge into self-employedom during this time. And so having this more resilient mindset behind me was something that I really wanted to cultivate so that I could handle the trials and tribulations of being self-employed. Because if you're self-employed, you know, um, yeah, sure, you don't have a boss to answer to. You just have to answer to yourself. And if you're kind of shitty, you're just like another shitty boss. You know what I'm saying? So I started to have to face myself and face my relationship with money and work and that brought me to therapy because I wasn't handling it well and my spiritual awakening really really like expedited during therapy I found a therapist who specialized in EMDR I had done so much talk therapy up until this point a lot of counseling like things that help you you get a lot of coping skills with that but they don't get the thing out of you i was tired of ruminating on what had happened to me and i realized that reading books only takes you so far They're, like knowledge only takes you so far in the healing journey nowadays they call it somatic healing that wasn't really a thing in like 2017 i mean it was but it wasn't like talked about as widely as it is now it has all like really improved and become a lot more normal and like normalized I guess is the best way to say it in the last like two to three years and it's all happened very quickly. In a session of EMDR I am 
clearing out some memory, some trauma of memory. It's like moving your eyes back and forth. If you want to know more about EMDR, you need to go Google it somewhere else. I'm just not going to be the person who teaches people about that. It's eye movement, reprocessing, and desensitization. It's for people who have CPTSD and PTSD. It's for basically processing the trauma in your brain and in your body. If you want to know more about it, go look it up. I have this experience during EMDR where I am having this conversation with this being that is not me. It feels like this loving, compassionate being that is like being very supportive and telling me I can do it. And at this point in my life, my inner monologue was very shame based. It was very like, you're nothing. You can do nothing. You are no one. You shouldn't even try. You're not good enough. Why are you even here in the first place? So having a voice inside of my head that was supportive and kind and compassionate just felt different. It kind of felt like, is this the voice of God? And it opened me up to the world beyond just my inner monologue. It made me ask questions of like, whose voice is really in my head? What is going on? Like if I have the option to have a kind, compassionate voice in my head, how do I do that? How do I get there? And it opened me into like the world of like new age, I have to say. I found, I started to work with this jeweler who um, was into that kind of thing. I think that's how we connected. We connected on the fact that like we were both childs of narcissists and she was really into this comedian at the time. Now just like a medium philosopher, uh, how do I say it? Like alchemist kind of type. Um, her name is Jessa Reed. She does the meth pee comedy bit, but she's just like, a spiritual lady who talks about stuff on the internet and helps give people keys to themselves is kind of how I feel about it. And so I found her her podcast Soberish and Mormon and the Meth Head and I ate it up. I finally felt for the first time in my life like I wasn't alone. Like people are experiencing these things, they're seeing these things, they're seeing the universe in this in a really similar way as I am and I'm not alone anymore and how beautiful is this? And so I kind of like plunge into it full steam ahead and I consume as much spiritual and philosophical content as I can. All of the Alan Watts videos that I can find on YouTube and anything about Carl Jung and the Red Book. And I really loved Uber Boyo and Steven when they would talk about the Red Book. I just ate that content up. It was so delicious. And anybody who was on Jess's podcast, I would listen to their podcast and listen to all of their guests and everything. And I was just really, like honestly seeing the magic of the world around me for the first time ever and feeling it and using it and it felt incredible. It just felt like I had found this like missing piece of myself and for me personally, I don't have any like one specific belief. I've never really felt called to lay down my life to one deity or one religious path. I've always really desired to keep an open mind and open hand with all of this and use what works for me and leave the rest. I really don't feel like there's any one way to do this. If parts of astrology work for me and parts of human design work for me and parts of Jungian whatever the fuck work for me, then I'm just going to do that until it doesn't. And then when I need to find something else, I will. And it has gone in phases for me. I think a lot of the core of my spiritual practice is about getting to know myself and getting to know my deep, authentic, true self. And through honestly doing EMDR and healing my nervous system and healing my inner child, I've been able to do that. And I think that I've found that now spirituality to me looks like living a really cool, really intentional, really fulfilling and satisfying human existence. Because here's the thing, we have three components to our beings. We are mind, we are body, we are spirit. I think in contemporary Western society, we are very mind and body heavy. This is where like the scientific materialism comes in. The people who are like, if it can't be proved with a scientific article or a scientific experiment, it's not real and you're delusional and you're experiencing spiritual psychosis. And if you interact with spirits and interact with the animal world and think that plants have consciousness, you're crazy. And I feel like that's because they're disconnected from spirit. And then you see too, like with the spirit jewel new age movement where people are really into the spirit, but they're neglecting their minds or they're neglecting their bodies. They think that they can just pray the depression away. They think that they can just take more mushrooms and then they'll become enlightened. And then all of that mental illness will just disappear or that all of their like trauma will just disappear. And I'm not knocking mushroom therapy when it's done very intentionally and done in a way that can be very therapeutic. But if you're just like taking mushrooms in the woods with your friends and it's not like an intentional, intentional purge, 
I don't know how effective that is, but I have to be honest, I don't have much experience with it. So I'm being a little judgmental of it and I could be wrong. And that's something I will admit all day long. We are three beings really in one, the mind, the body, and the spirit. And to honor all three, I feel like is to find a well-rounded life. Like you see it with yogis. There is so much wisdom in the yogic practice that is beyond just asana. But you go on Instagram any day of the week and you see girls in their aloe yoga sets doing these yoga asanas that are great. Like they're doing great things for their body, doing great things for their mind because they're working out their body. But the spirit of it is very much based in like this consumeristic, I want people to see me in a very specific way. I'm not being very authentic. Here I am posturing to the world. I'm not really living my real life kind of vibes. And that's just what I get. Obviously not everybody who posts yoga content is like a poser phony butthole, but there's a lot of them out there. Like the LA yogis who like have no idea about the how deep the practice goes or like the historical origins of it, you know? That's just an example of how mind, body, and spirit can be disconnected and how it shows up in the world. You're, there's Everybody has this mind, body, spirit within them. I would say most of us, you know, are always working on balance. Balance is never something that you're going to be able to like fully achieve and maintain. It's just kind of this ever going and flowing thing, but it's just something to start considering. How can you honor your mind, body, and spirit every day? And as you begin to develop this relationship with that, you will cultivate what I believe to be like a truly like grounded spiritual life. I don't believe that we are separated from the creator at all. Like the creator is within every single one of us and we all have access to it at all times. And in order to like fully honor it, we have to create in our own ways. For me, I've chosen jewelry and other forms of art. Creating can also be like gardening, problem solving, like building a family, um, playing music. It doesn't have to be this thing that like becomes this financial support for you. You are allowed to create and be free and expansive in your creative being regardless of what the outcome is because that is like the natural inherent part of who you are and it's inherent to your being as a human being connected to the creator. I spent a lot of time asking God like what are you? What is the nature of your being? How, how do I know that this is like real? And every time I would receive the answer of oneness that all living beings and even non-living beings, every molecule of existence has the thread of the creator within it. So the molecules that make up my physical body have the same spark of the creator as the drywall that makes up this room, of the rocks that are under my feet, of the metal that is made into my car, you know, where I can see this like spark spiritual essence in all things that has led me down the road towards animism which has also started to inform my art and the what the things that I create in my art I make jewelry I make gemstone and like precious metal jewelry and all of these minerals come from the earth they were formed there they sat there for god knows how long before someone dug them up and polished them and sold them to me and this like deep connected relationship to the earth feels right in my soul for me personally where i feel this connectedness where i can see myself in these rocks and i can see myself in these minerals and form relationships with them and start to tell stories about them that will then maybe resonate with your life and the spirit of these stones can be something that informs your life now and something you get to have a relationship with and then even go on and add the story around value and how precious metals were once money and how for a long time the dollar was backed by gold and had this like gold standard you know our dollar is not backed by that anymore it's basically just imaginary money backed by vibes whereas like gold is like currency you can take a box of gold and run off to europe and you have a nest egg to start a life there you can't necessarily do that with paper money, especially if the economy ever crashes. I'm not saying that it will. I don't want to predict anything like that. I'm not really into the prediction game. I feel like another layer to all of this is timelines and how 
there's this, I don't know the words for all of this. One thing about me is I will read a lot about a lot of different things. So I know a little bit about a lot of different things. I think books were an oracle for me for a while where I would find books at the exact right time. I would get the piece of information I needed from it and then I would move on to the next topic. And so I never really sat and like got to know one school of thought very deeply. I just read a lot about a lot of different things and I still continue to do that, like learn a lot about a lot of different things. I call it following the threads of my interests. Like first I'm gonna read a book over here about this and then, oh, that's gonna bring up a thing that brings me over here about information about this. And it just kind of goes back and forth and ebbs and flows until I get tired of it and I wanna do something else. I don't know how to describe timelines. It's one of those things where I can see the full image of what all of this is very clearly in my head, but I, I have a really hard time translating it into language because I don't know if it can be defined so simply because it's this like very complex thing that embodies like it's the spiritual worlds and time and ah, ah, yeah, I don't know. I. I have to be so real. I don't know. And I might spend the rest of my life attempting to articulate these things and fail. I don't know. I think of timelines as potential realities in this universe where all things are happening at all times. It's like the quantum world, the quantum, the quantum, you know, the quantum where my mindset tunes me to certain frequencies that tunes me to certain timelines. If I don't believe I can do it, I'm going to be on the timeline where I can't do it. But if I start to like program myself to believe, oh, I can be a successful whatever. I can form deep, healthy relationships. I can whatever the fuck it is. Every day I get a little bit closer to being on the timeline where that is my reality. I feel like Timelines are the potential reality or the reality that you're on and they're all like stacked layered, you know You might be here and you want to get to a timeline that's way over here. You gotta Step make little timeline jumps because it's really really hard to like jump cut to where you want to be without taking those little steps This is where like manifestation comes in. I'm not really sure, you know, that could be a whole nother video whole nother topic and it's something I honestly haven't quite hacked, you know, I see these like manifestation gurus online. I think they're all full of shit. I don't think people are like really like mm, calling in all this stuff the way that they like are pretending to on social media because social media is fucking fake, you guys. It's not real. Some people are, I'm sure, really good at calling in their realities. And so I don't want to diminish those people who really are. I just don't know. Maybe I'm a hater because I haven't figured it out yet. That, I'm not gonna be it. The timeline is the reality and the potential reality. And your mindset is the key to moving from one timeline to another how you believe how you feel about yourself i feel like belief is the glue that holds all of this together belief is a thing that can create entire realities and belief is like the foundation for all of this if you believe in this religion that you are a part of then it's real but if you don't then it's not real but the reality is that it's all real and it's all not real it's this thing where we, can't, we have to step outside of black and white thinking. Black and white thinking is like kind of the death of like growth and the death of unity and the death of like true connection. It, if it's either black or white, you're not able to see the gray in the middle where reality really lives because everything is gray all the time. It's always this and that. So yes, your beliefs are real, but they are also not real. And if you feel triggered or feel attacked by the fact that they are also not real, that could be some good, a good place to start with some shadow work, a good place to start to look within yourself and to see where you're placing your authority. If you're giving your authority away willy nilly to spiritual leaders, it's time to stop doing that, honey. You are your own spiritual authority. You are your own authority, period. You can listen to other people and gain insight and knowledge and wisdom from other people. People hold keys to parts of yourself all the time. So it's important to listen and be receptive. But if someone's saying something that fundamentally does not resonate with you and makes you feel ashamed and makes you feel like disconnected from yourself, don't give them your power. You give them your power. It's over. I feel like the spirit world is a lot more complex than, you know, a short YouTube video. And so this is me like having another swing at it, but it's really difficult because 
I feel like there's this voice in the back of my head that's like, no, you don't want to lead people astray because there's this like responsibility when you share yourself with the world and you like share these truths that you have discovered with the world. I don't want people to take this and be led down a path that leads them to be harmed. But I will say, if you allow anything that I say today lead you down a path of harm, you have given me authority that I do not deserve. I don't deserve anybody's authority to be given to me. I am nobody's authority. I am the authority of my own life. Sometimes of my cat, but he's kind of his own guy too. And that's it. I'm just sharing with you what I believe and how I see the world. Take it or leave it. If it feels like shameful or hard for you to listen to, leave it. It's not that serious. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it is never my intention to evangelize my beliefs to others. I feel like evangelism has led to true horrors of the world. And I would like to see that be a thing that stops happening. So if I can just like even at the least spread that message, that's good for me. Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about is, ooh, okay, the hermetic laws of the universe. Go listen to the Kaibalon. You can find it on YouTube for free. It's just an audiobook, like an old hermetic laws of the universe, kind of like intro to some of these things that I'm talking about. I listened to it a few times back when all of this started and it really gave me a lot of keys. I have been really feeling lately the balancing of the masculine and the feminine energy. So the masculine and the feminine energy have absolutely nothing to do with gender. Well, that is something that we as humans have like put into a construct and put on people who have certain kinds of body parts and certain kinds of like ways of looking. But it is not like an inherent truth that humans have to be this way. It is an energy and we get to embody that regardless of our body parts. I think for a long time, we as a collective worldwide have been in a very masculine state. The patriarchy has been a system that many, many cultures around the entire world have been navigating. And it's not working. Like, let's be real. Let's look at the last several hundred years. Can you tell me that the world has really been thriving? Oh yeah, the development of America. On the back of who? Okay. Like, like yeah, okay. I think that there's a lot of great things about America, but you know, like let's take a look at our history from a real objective lens, you guys. You think that was built from a place of love and light? No, I don't think so. Domination and financial improvement of a certain group of people, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like this system of stealing people's resources, of selfish gain, of building things on the backs of others, you know, the diminishment of women and people of color and just being like, just generally like really separate and shitty. I feel like this age is coming to an end, at least in America. And it's interesting to watch. I see a lot of videos on the internet, you know, I'm a TikTok girl of people going to Europe and realizing that people over there are actually super xenophobic. And they come back to the United States and realize like, oh, we've actually as a collective done a lot of work to face racism, to face xenophobia, to face sexism, to like face these isms that are very destructive of the world and maybe be an example for how to lead the rest of the world out of this because it's very oppressive and it's very not good. And I wish that I had more words for it because it's again, like trying to translate a movie and a feeling in my heart into articulate language, which I've never really been good at, but here I am trying anyway. I feel like we're seeing the, the rise of like the feminine energy and I'm here for it. For a while, I was really resisting. My masculine energy kept me alive, kept me safe for a long time. It kept me protected, which is its purpose. You know, if you're finding yourself in the same situation where you can't put your masculine down, it's because it's been serving you. It's been like doing its job to protect you and keep you stable and keep you secure through hard times and so I think the first thing that we have to do when we start to look at this is like be really soft and compassionate with ourselves and if that's not something you can access start to explore how you can start to access that even if it's just through like affirmations therapy whatever it is like start to invite self-compassion into your consciousness because it will help make all of this go a lot smoother 
shame is just like a really insidious poison that has no benefits to like really personal development. So as soon as we start to address that shaming voice within ourselves and start to build a practice of self-compassion, you're going to see a lot of progress within yourself and you're going to see a lot of connectedness within yourself and the world around you. You can see the wounds of other people and you can understand where they're coming from and that doesn't excuse it by any means, but you do have a open heart to be able to have compassion for people who are in pain, which is helpful when you're trying to like heal and repair a collective. The Divine Feminine has come online. I don't know when she did. For me, she came online a couple years ago when I started to really do this deep healing work. I had some experiences with Archangels and EMDR therapy that really like ushered in this like very Divine Feminine energy in my life. For me, it really started with Mary, like St. Mary. I learned a lot about folk Catholicism there for a while. And I just felt like I found like this place where I was able to work with the ancestors because the ancestors have had this practice with Catholicism for a very long time and starting to recognize the saints that they were worshiping as deities that at one point during history, when my ancestors were basically forced to either join the church or be killed, they chose to join the church and Mary became this you know saint that they would worship but it was the face of mary that was also the face of like diana hecate the women you know that were once worshipped now become mary so that this practice has just evolved into something else and i think that that's really beautiful i've started to really see the joy in animism and seeing the spirits in the trees and the spirits in a house and the spirits in a room and the chair i'm sitting on and the coffee that I'm drinking and, you know, just seeing the spirit of the world around me has honestly just been fun. And I've chosen that because it's been fun. I've really chosen to try and build a life where I am focusing on fun and pleasure and going after my desires, which is like all the things you're told not to do in Christianity. I realized if I want to live a fulfilling human life, I have to go after these things because what the fuck else is the point? I realized that chasing all of these spiritual beliefs and chasing all of this like perfecting my body and perfecting my mind and being perfectly healed and being fit and skinny and so healthy and only eating the right things and oh I'm so healthy because I eat all these perfect foods and I never make a mistake and then when I do make a mistake I shame myself and I fall back into that weird eating disorder cycle that is somewhere between binge eating and orthorexia where I'm obsessed with everything that goes in my body and it's like unbalanced and then it's just been like how do I as a person who now recognizes the spirit within me and the spirit of all those around me have a relationship with my mind and body in a balanced way and have a relationship with spirit in a balanced way where I recognize like I am a spiritual being having a human experience. And when I think a lot of us realize that we are spiritual beings, we launch off into space and we try and find our spirit guides and we find deities to work with. And we're like really connecting with the spirit world for a while. And we kind of lose sight of our body and mind and like lose our contact with the ground. We're not grounding ourselves. And I think for a lot of us, it's just part of the process. You know, it's no judgments from me because I've been there, done that. I think a lot of us go through those cycles, especially in the society where everything's like very scientific materialist based. If it's not physical and observable, it's not real. And if you're having, you know, spiritual experiences, that's psychosis and you need to be medicated and institutionalized. And it's like very like shamed. When you awaken to this part of yourself, it's very eye-opening. It's very expansive. It's very like you're finding these parts of yourself and it's fun. But then that gets old too. Like it gets old after a while. And I realized that if I'm not living my life in a way that is balancing of these components of myself and geared towards fun and pleasure and my desires and connecting with others and experiencing as much as I can, then I'm not really living to my fullest potential. Your spiritual beings, yes. Our soul is here in our bodies, yes. But beyond that, we're just humans living life as humans do. So let's think about that. Humans are like, we're like apes. We're, we're literally animals that we have been so disconnected from our true nature that we just like kind of forget that we are nature. Every molecule of your being comes from the earth. Every bite you take, even if it's red 40, baby girl saturated fat if you're eating cheetos all day long that still came from nature that didn't like poof in here from outer space 
that came from nature. Every molecule of your being comes from the earth and it will return to the earth upon your death. And I think it's really important to recognize those like ancient energies at play here. Like your bones and your teeth will return to the soil and then be regenerated into something else. What that is, is none of your business. Right now, you are embodied as this human being. How are you living your life? Are you living it for others? Are you living it for the approval of others in institutions or within your family, within your societies? Or are you chasing the dreams that are on your heart? I think it's more important to follow your heart, follow your desires, and do what makes you happy. Nine times out of ten, you're not going to screw other people over. When you're coming from a place of like truly seeing the connection in the world around you, you understand that when you hurt somebody else, you're hurting yourself. When you screw someone else over, you're screwing yourself over. And you start to see this oneness and all that opens this compassion to the world around you. Where when you are going after your desires and you are doing what's on your heart, it's not going to crumble other people's lives because you have the capacity for compassion to see the connectedness in it all to know we are all one big being and when your brother is hurting you are hurting that's not to say that people will like it that's not to say that you don't have to set boundaries and that people won't be able to handle your boundaries that's just on like personal autonomy and personal sovereignty if you're letting other people like leech your energy you're not honoring yourself you're not honoring them and it feels like all over the place like it's hard to knock this all down into like one concise video so that's just kind of like the general generalness of what I believe in and if you resonate with any of that let me know I think a lot of this has been really informing my art recently especially the animism I'm looking at this chain that I made let me show you this I'm gonna make a whole build video about this chain it's it was a process it taught me a lot about perfectionism and like not giving up and the spirit of this necklace is very much like tough, you know? This, this necklace is completely fine in sterling silver. Amazing, immaculate, delicious. It started off as 60 feet of just plain round wire. I formed and cut and fused over a hundred links. And then I shaped them and then I wove them and then I fucked up. And so I unwove them and I reshaped them and then I rewove them and then I formed it and like stretched it out and made it all nice and like wearable. And then I patinaed it and then I polished it and then I've worn it a few, few times. So from the beginning, we have the spirit of the pure fine silver. Then we have the spirit of the fire that fused every single one of these links. And then we have the spirit of my will that went into each of one of these links as I wove it, reshaped it, and wove it again. And then the essence of like my being that has gone into it as I've worn it. And I think metal is so absorbent. But not necessarily like in a bad way. Like just because I've worn this necklace a few times doesn't mean that I won't be able to sell it to you and that it'll be contaminated. No, it's like a layering of energies and that each person who wears it and each experience that this metal gets to participate in adds to the essence of it. And I just think that that's so beautiful. Here we have a, a, a piece that was sand cast. This was a bunch of different other pieces of jewelry. So the spirit of all of that lives within this. And then the gemstones themselves coming from the earth and being cut and polished into what they are. And then me designing and setting them. It's like this layering of energy where now the spirit of this piece is something that is completely unique that you can use to like honestly create your like dream life. And I think that through ritual and through routine and through like adorning our body and like honoring this vessel that we're in, is such a beautiful way to like, it is like a spiritual practice, like getting dressed in the morning, washing your face, doing your skincare, adorning your body, personalizing yourself so that you are this like autonomous individual being is part of the human experience. That is not something we have to be ashamed of. It's not something we have to shy away from. We get one chance 
in this like being maybe we reincarnated into something else later like that's none of my business i don't actually know how that goes but the reality is, is i only get one life in this body as me sabina and this time and so i'm going to take advantage of that if i want to get tattoos and like adorn myself in a way that feels really empowering i'm gonna do that i i love the sacred act of putting on jewelry and making jewelry for you guys that you get to like ritually adorn yourself with and like feeling the magic of it all. I hope that when you put on a piece of my jewelry, you feel the love and the intention that goes into it. And that with that, you get to put your own intentions and your own love into it and build this like deep relationship with these objects that resonate energy and hold memories and hold frequency and are just, I don't know, like these little essences like the spirit of this metal gets to live with you and i think that that's a beautiful relationship that you get to have with an object my relationship with spirituality is ever growing ever changing as i learn more and develop more things change over the last year or so i've been completely disconnected i've really been leaning into hobbies and finding things that actually are fun and leaning into the more like human experience side of life i read so many books in the last year I found a deep relationship with the divine feminine through storytelling and through books. And I feel this like awakening of her in the collective as well. I think that we can do like a whole case study on pop music right now. Like the way that I would get on my hands and knees for Chapel Roan is like a feeling I've never experienced before, but it feels like me returning to a part of myself that I didn't know was there. Like it's like online now and it can never be turned offline again. And so as the feminine awakens and we learn how to be more soft and receptive and like mm, take command, like there's like this aspect of the feminine that can be quite dark and quite spooky and quite unsettling. I've heard this narrative before where Mary and the divine feminine can be considered like the empress of hell and the queen of heaven. She holds the space to hold both the deepest, darkest, painful wounds imaginable as well as hold space and within her body for the divine pure essence of light you can see it in the christ story you can see it in the solstice story as well how the divine feminine like hold space for the darkness as well as like birthing the light and i think that's a really beautiful metaphor for femininity and being a woman and just that divine feminine energy that can live within anybody regardless of what your body parts look like you can embody this energy as well and as it rises i think that we can see how the world has just become this like spinning pool of chaos all in the spirit of destroying this old way of being and birthing something new and so i would say hold on tight um, do what resonates with you. Like, I don't know. This is just kind of stuff that's been coming up for me. I keep looking over here because I have this statue of Mary that I have been putting on an altar. I'm setting up my altar in my studio um, sometime in the next couple days. And she's always a part of it. Something about this really resonates with me too because snakes were like a really strong symbol that really represented the beginning of my spiritual awakening. Like with the whole divine feminine and the kundalini awakening and the shedding your skin and cycles of death and rebirth i think that when we can hold space for death we are really also holding energy of the divine feminine like the divine feminine is a reaper in some stories and she holds space for death and as well as a portal for life and i think that's a really beautiful really sacred thing that has been pushed under the rug when we have been we as women i feel like i hold a lot of the wounds of the collective feminine along with a lot of us and have been assigned in this life the task to feel it and to move it and to help heal the collective i don't think that this shift will be something i see completely in my lifetime i think it'll be several generations before we see like a true matriarchal society but it's coming and i feel really honored to be born during this space and time and to be part of this generation of women ushering in this new age where we are tearing down these systems and it's like it lights a fire within me that's just like hmm, we're here like i'm sitting on gold right now and there's nothing you wouldn't do for that hmm. like you know that old sentiment of like behind every strong man is an even stronger woman yeah it's time to get out of the shadow of the man mm -hmm. like 
that's just the truth. And to be a part of this new generation that's like building this reality, it just, it feels like an honor to be here. And I think maybe over time I'll make more videos talking about spirituality. That was a lot. I am uh, going to leave this here. So if you like that, subscribe, like do all the things. I also make jewelry videos. I just started a new channel for if you want to learn how to make jewelry or just want to see how it's made, go to that. It's in the bio. If you want to support this channel, you can follow me on Instagram or subscribe to my newsletter. You can find that through the link to my website. A little pop-up will come up with a coupon and the option to enter in your email. I send one out like maybe two to three times a month. Something I'm kind of not the best at, but if you want to know like what's up, what we're working on, get new videos sent to you, blog posts, new work, behind the scenes kind of content, subscribe to that. Um, Instagram's also good. Subscribe to this channel. Um, buy my jewelry if you feel called. It's all very sacred and magical and helps you connect to your deepest parts of yourself. So that's really fun and cool and cute. Um, until next time. Bye.